Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how the conservation of energy follows from Newton's second law in the case of a particle moving through a force field. And our starting point is going to be this equation up at the top left, which just is Newton's second law. It says the rate of change of momentum P of the particle is equal to the force F acting on the particle. Now, in the form that I've written it, uh, F is a function only of position R. Um, and so we're not going to consider velocity dependent forces like the magnetic force, for example, in this video. Now, before we start thinking in detail about how this relates to energy, I just want to do a little bit of rearranging, put all the terms on the same side so that we get dp by dt minus um, f of r is equal to the zero vector. Now, this is a differential equation, so we probably want to think about integrating it. The obvious thing to try might be integrate with respect to time because you've got dp by dt over here. Um, if you integrate with respect to time, you just get the result that change in momentum equals integral of force with respect to time, which is true, but it doesn't really tell us anything about the energy. So we're going to have to try integrating with respect to something else instead. Now, um, what we can do, because this is a, a vector equation, you can take the dot product of each side with a little infinitesimal uh, displacement dr and then integrate um, with respect to displacement along some particular path right remember we're thinking in, in three dimensions here um, so uh, let's make that a bit more concrete let's write down some equations so the integral of dp by dt dotted with dr again that's an infinitesimal displacement uh, minus the integral of f of r dotted with dr. This is now going to be just equal to a constant, right? Because when you do zero dot dr, you get the zero scalar, and then you integrate that, um, and you just get a, a constant, right? So um, what can we do with this? Well, let's focus on the first term for now, uh, see whether we can simplify that. So we've got dp by dt, but we're integrating with respect to r. Um, it would be better if we could just do an integral with respect to t instead, right? Because uh, this is a time derivative. So what we can do is rewrite the um, rewrite the dr as dr by dt times dt, right? You can basically think of the dt's as cancelling. Um, but then by definition, dr by dt is the velocity of our particle. That's just v, right, for velocity. So we've got that this is the integral of um, dp by dt dotted with the velocity um, with respect to time. Now, uh, next step is going to be just recall the basic definition of momentum. P is just mass times velocity. Okay, And so um, I am going to write this V over here as momentum divided by mass. And assuming that the mass is constant, we can take that out of the integral and write this as 1 over m times the integral of dp by dt dotted with p with respect to time. And then again, you can kind of think of these dt's as, as cancelling, right? This one and this one. Um, and uh, this gives 1 over m times the integral of p dot dp. Now, this is good because the integrand is just p and we're integrating with respect to p. So we should be able to make some progress here. What we can do is just expand this dot product uh, into its individual terms, right? And so you're going to get px dpx, where this the x is just the x component of the momentum, right? And then you get identical terms for the y and z parts, right? So py dpy, and then plus pz dpz. Now, when you integrate px with respect to px, you just get a half px squared. You're going to get identical terms for the y and z parts as well, right? So when you put all that together, um, keeping that factor of 1 over m in the front there, you're going to get 1 over 2m times px squared plus py squared <clears throat> plus pz squared. Now, I don't have a constant of integration here. Like, you don't have to do a plus c or anything because I already have that on the other side of my equation up at the top there, right? Um, now, if you think about it, this bracketed term is just the magnitude of the momentum squared. So I can write that as p squared over 2m. You may already recognize that as just the um, sort of uh, typical expression for the kinetic energy. If you prefer, you can actually rewrite that as just a half mv squared, which might be more familiar just using the fact that p is equal to mv, right? So this first term, right, that whole um, first 
term on the left hand side of the, the equation is just a uh, kinetic energy. And so what we have found then is that half mv squared um, minus the integral of uh, f of r dot dr is just a constant. Um, at this point, you might start to suspect that this is potential energy, right? Because this is saying that kinetic energy plus or minus this bit is equal to a constant. So we could um, rewrite it as a half mv squared plus some function u of r, which we're going to identify with the potential energy, is equal to a constant, where we have defined uh, u of r, it's a scalar function, right, to be minus the integral of um, f of r dotted with dr. The thing to, to watch out for here is this, this, this only works with certain types of force, right? So remember, these integrals that we've been doing, these are line integrals, right? And so you have to choose a particular three-dimensional path to, to integrate along. Um, if you have a force f of r for which the value of this integral depends on the path between two particular points that you take, then it doesn't make any sense to, to say that that's equal to u of r because you would get a different result depending on the path, right? So you can only, you know, call this a function uh, u of r in the particular case where this integral doesn't depend on the path through space that you take. That type of force is called a conservative force, um, and that's one way to understand what a conservative force is, right? So the integral doesn't depend on the path, and therefore we can say that kinetic energy plus potential energy is a constant.